I'm Aaron Hallett, reporting from MuscleTalk.co.uk. I'm here with Rachel France, who's working for Intelligent Training Systems. Yeah. So how long have you been working for Intelligent Training Systems for? Um, intelligent Training Systems originated uh, about four years ago, actually. Um, but as it is, as the business is, it's about, it's about two years now. Okay. And you're a biomechanics coach as well, aren't you? Yeah, biomechanics coach um, and also program director and master trainer. And you're a regular poster on Muscle Talk as well? I am. I have been, uh, it's about 18 months on there as well now. Now, based on my postings on the, my progress journal, you've seen my back photos and you've noticed there's something called a hinge on my lower back. Yes. And what we're going to be doing today is going through my back and having a screening process is what you call it? Yeah. So we've got an assessment process where we look at um, the function of the pelvis, right. uh, the nerves, muscle spasm and things and how they react to each other, potentially cause things like uh, something we call like a, a hinge um, that we saw in your back, which is caused by QL spasm which is a muscle in your back called the quadratus lumborum. All right. So we'll have another look for it today and see if we can uh, see maybe where it's come from. Okay, I'll pass it over to you and let's start. Thank you. Okay, so what Chris is doing here, um, he's putting some markers onto Aaron's um, ankle bones so that he can then measure uh, whether he has a leg length difference. From this we can see if there's a difference in leg length um, and how this might impact upon the structures in his body. So the movements he's doing here will square off the pelvis and put it into Aaron's neutral for him at the moment. Relaxing off the muscles in the hip. So we've got a right leg slightly longer or the left leg actually may be shorter. We don't know yet which, which one is dysfunctional. Um, or at this point he could have a genetic leg length difference. So what um, Chris is doing now is checking whether his pelvis actually functions correctly. What should happen when he does this movement? The leg should lengthen and shorten. Uh, which it doesn't. Um, Chris has told us it's not functioning properly. So that was the shorter leg. So that's certainly not working on that side, that left side of the pelvis. Right side's moved. So it needs to go back. So the right side of the pelvis is functioning okay. The right leg is the correct length. It's the shorter leg that is dysfunctional on the left side. This next screen is to test for sciatic nerve tension. Now I'm going to do the movement for you. Chris is just explaining to Aaron what he should or shouldn't be feeling to complete the test. So we lock out the leg and we're looking for tension in that sciatic nerve. So there was a change as Chris brought the leg across. What this means is that um, although uh, Aaron felt it in his hamstring first when he lifted it, it's not hamstring tension, it's actually sciatic nerve tension. Chris is going to do the same on the other side. So again, on this left side, we've got some sciatic nerve tension. So if you imagine when Aaron's wanting to do squats or deadlifts, or any of the types of moves that might create tension in the sciatic nerve, if it hasn't got its full capacity, this is going to cause problems in the structures of his body, whether it be muscle spasm um, or, or that type of thing caused in his back. And then just relax it down to the foot of the couch. This is the four sign test. Um, it's also a test for the pelvis and its function. It actually checks for uh, the SI joint function, that's your sacroiliac joint. It's where the spine sits in the pelvis and there should be a certain degree of movement there. So the left side is dysfunctional as well. So there's certainly some pelvic dysfunction here for Aaron. Um, uh, combined with the sciatic nerve tension, these are bound to cause him some problems. So this test is to specifically have a look at that QL hinge that we spoke about earlier. Um, 
So what we're looking at is the line of the spine and we're looking for a hinge. Um, and what the hinge looks like is a sort of a, a, a change in the smooth C shape of the uh, structures through the spine. So if I can just point something out here, there's a sort of a shadow coming in yeah. here, um, which even in that upright position is showing that his spine isn't actually straight in, in a neutral. As he bends, we're getting a flat section, which is showing there's not full capacity of movement through each joint in the back. And then, it's looking, yeah, it's looking flat in there as well. So performing movements um, through those ranges with um, different degrees of range at certain areas can cause wear and tear on the facet joints in the back. This is obviously a problem, certainly with somebody lifting heavier weights, as these joints are the ones that protect the discs in the back. So now there is potential risk for those discs to get damaged. So what Chris is doing with, here, with Aaron here now is assessing his shoulder function. Um, we're looking at tightness through muscles like subscapularis and infraspinatus which are involved in the rotation of the shoulder. Yeah, so definitely positive results there where he's getting lifts in the shoulder which shows for tension in these muscles. In biomechanical terms we talk about a very direct link between the pelvis and the shoulder and how they function and affect each other. So if Aaron has these pelvic dysfunctions combined with the shoulder problems um, then potentially this is going to have an effect on his spine and certainly on each other. Understanding which one came first is what we need to do um, to, to work out which exercises to give him. We consider that 60% of biomechanical dysfunction comes from the pelvis, as research tells us, so that's where we always start. The pelvis work may actually release the problems in the shoulder. We'll find that out when we work on Aaron and work with some exercises with him. So Chris is now looking at uh, Aaron's uh, range uh, through his spine in flexion to see what he's capable of. The biomechanics model isn't a medical model. It's based on basic measurements that you're watching Chris do with Aaron now. Um, and each measurement has a specific exercise that will correct that dysfunction if it has been caused by a, a, a malfunction to the structure. No medical training is needed for this. Any exercise professional um, can understand this and use these methods to help alleviate things like low back pain, uh, shoulder issues, knee issues, or just to enable you to move more freely. So again, we're looking at Aaron's range, this time in side flexion. So Aaron's reporting that he's less comfortable one side to the other, which shows asymmetry as well. So this final test, um, which again, these have just been a sample of all the tests we do, is called gilets. It's another pelvic test, but this time in weight bearing. So with Aaron standing, um, taking the weight through his feet, it can change how the muscles are working in the pelvis. Chris is going to measure that each side of the pelvis can function independently. 
So as Aaron lifts his leg, the left side should move independently to the right side. Okay. So it's not moving as it should do. So there's still some um, dysfunction even in standing. If you imagine this is the action that, that happens at the hip, even during things like deadlifts and squats. So uh, during those movements, Aaron's pelvis is not going to move as it should, which potentially can add to those low back problems and the hinge in his back. Thank you very much.